Welcome back. Yesterday, a new version of Agent Zero has been released. The version now is 093, and it contains a lot of improvements in terms of subordinate agent system, agent memory, connectivity, quality of life improvements, AI providers, and developer features, and some more. So let's get into it. While the version 093 was in testing, we started working on 094 already. So we have a bunch of commits in development, and 094 will be released to testing soon. So stay tuned for more updates. Just a reminder, Agent Zero is completely free and open source. It is being built for you. You can use it for whatever you want. You can see our web agent-0.ai. You can find links to our socials here. You can learn more about the project and you can learn more about our token and the community platform using it. We also have a growing school community where we host our community calls and where you can find learning resources in the classroom as well as community call recordings. Now for the updates, the biggest one is under the hood and it is the new extensibility of subordinate agents. In previous versions, subordinate agents were subdirectory of the prompts directory, meaning you could redefine agents prompts, you could change its behavior, you could give it more detailed instructions regarding its role, but you couldn't redefine its tools without affecting other agents. You could hide extra tools from some agents by not giving them the, the prompt file with the tool description, but still sometimes agents were able to dig that information out from memory or find it in the file system. And there was previously no way of implementing dedicated system extensions to individual subordinate agents. This has changed. All the agents now live inside the agents directory in the project root, and they can now contain not only prompt extensions and redefinitions, but also custom tools and system extensions. What this means is that you can now not only change how the agent behaves with the prompt files, but you can also change how the framework behaves when this particular agent is being used. For example, if you need the context window of the agent injected with additional information about the current project, for example, you can create a system extension in that particular extension point and it will only be triggered on that one agent. For more detailed information about how the extensibility framework works and how to develop Agent Zero, you can see our GitHub. In documentation, there is extensibility guide, and there is also a guide how to develop Agent Zero locally. Last week, I made a video going through these two guides, showing you how to set up development environment for Agent Zero and how to use extensibility features. It is on our channel Agent Zero and it's called Developer's Guide to Agent Zero. We are going to rework some of our existing subordinate agents with these new superpowers in mind for the future releases. But if you're a developer, the doors are open for you now as well. Just watch the development guide and you can do magic with your new subordinate agents. Another update is the memory system. It is an improvement proposal upvoted on our community platform. Now in agent settings, memory, we have a set of configuration controls for the memory system. The biggest updates here are that we improved the memory quality by utilizing AI for memory consolidation when saving memories and filtering memories when loading them from the vector database. Both of these features use the utility model to make it fast and cheap. You can turn them off or you can tweak their parameters if you want. The memory consolidation increases the overall memory quality over time by consolidating similar or conflicting memories when saving them. So over time, the memory is being cleaned up, being less fragmented. While the loading filter implements the, the same AI utility model to check memories before injecting them into the system prompt for relevance, so we do not only rely on the similarity search in the vector database, we actually use AI to evaluate uh, the real relationship between the memory being loaded and the current context. Another two features are connected, that is the addition of Venice AI as an LLM provider and a rework of LLM providers making them configurable in a YAML file. The addition of Venice AI as a provider has been proposed by an improvement proposal on our community platform. Thank you very much for that. And it has been upvoted, accepted, and implemented already. Meaning you can now select Venice as a model provider, put in the model name, and in external services, API keys, your Venice API key.
Venice claims to be a private and uncensored inference provider, meaning it aligns perfectly with our project's goals and core principles, so you might want to give this one a try. To make this possible and to make addition of more model providers in the future easier, both for us as developers as well as for users, we implemented a new system of AI model provider configuration, now in the conf folder, modelproviders.yaml file. You can configure the available providers for chat models as well as embedding models. The structure of the file is pretty straightforward. Here we have chat models. This is the ID of the model, its readable name, and a mapping to a supported Light LLM provider. We still use Light LLM under the hood, so the provider has to be supported by Light LLM, which shouldn't be a problem as Light LLM can support any OpenAI compatible provider. So for example, this is how simple it was to implement Venice AI with this new configuration system. We just specify the ID Venice, name, Light LLM provider is OpenAI compatible, and in special arguments, we specify their API base URL. So now if you have any special requirements, like for example, adding the same provider twice with different parameters, like maybe two instances of OpenAI Azure, or if you have special requirements like extra headers being sent to your model provider, you can now edit this model provider's YAML file, or you can tell your agent to edit the file for you. There are no limits to these extra parameters. Everything is being sent to Light LLM as is. So you can check Light LLM documentation, which parameters are supported, and everything is being passed through. The next update is streamable HTTP MCP server support. Previously, we only supported server-side events MCPs. Now we support both server-side events as well as streamable HTTP. So Agent Zero can now consume both of these service types. And in the next version, 0.94, Agent Zero itself will be exposed as a streamable HTTP MCP as well as server-side event MCP. Next is a small quality of life improvement. Agent Zero will now start and restart faster than before, thanks to some resources being loaded at runtime instead of before starting the UI service. So if you change your Python files a lot and you need to restart your Python process, you will appreciate this. We have added initial agent message for new chats, and this is actually more important than it sounds, I'll explain. This serves two purposes. The first is visual for the user, but more importantly for the agent, it seems like a real message generated by himself. He can see the message in the message history. And this actually makes a big difference, especially with smaller models, because one thing is have the model instructed in system prompt how it should respond, but AI gives much more weight to its previous responses it can see in the history. So this way we can properly instruct it how to manage its thoughts and how to format its responses. So just with this simple sentence, just by using markdown formatting and emojis, we show the agent the proper way to communicate. Now if I ask what's the time, I would expect a formatted output. And here we can see the result in JSON. The agent stick to its previous style and repeats, sends me an icon and makes the actual information bold. Let's try, for example, with Llama 3.1 8B, a very small model. And let's use it as the main chat model. Get current time in San Francisco. Usually 8 billion parameter models can have problems with formatting their messages, but not anymore. As we can see, everything looks just fine. We can see here that 8B models are still not awesome. It failed too many times before getting the code right. But now it can at least use the framework properly and it doesn't misformat its messages. That's it for today. As always, thank you very much for your time. If you like what we build, you can consider subscribing and you can join our school community and meet us on our community call. Thank you very much. See you next time.